Hi guys, Cam here. Wait, wait, Seb here. Cam's taken a week off. Some say the disappearance of the office copy of FIFA is directly involved, but I'm sure it's just a coincidence. But while he's been gone, we've been playing The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, a first-person mystery game that's all about exploration, discovery, and solving ghost crimes. There are many things to love about the game. The fact that it doesn't hold your hand, the puzzle solving, the random astronauts, the lot. But what will really get you is how absolutely gorgeous and real the game looks without even playing on an ultra high setting. I mean, look at that grass, those trees, that building. So the whole thing got me thinking, how did the game's developers get such good looking assets? And how can video games become more photorealistic. So after some intense Googling, it turns out the astronauts, who are the guys who made the game, not some random spacemen, used a nifty technique called photogrammetry to achieve that real world look. Photogrammetry is the science of making measurements from photographs. And despite sounding super space agey, it actually dates back to the mid 19th century. But nowadays, modern technology has streamlined the process. You start by taking a buttload of pictures of your desired object from every conceivable angle. Some objects require as little as around 30 pictures, whereas bigger structures need a couple of hundred. Then you plug the pictures into some snazzy software like Photoscan by Agisoft, which uses a big old algorithm to make sense of it all. So after shoving a load of 2D images in, you get really highly detailed 3D models out, which you can then plonk into your game after compressing the files a bit, because the ones the software throws out are huge. Photogrammetry has been used for years for loads of various applications, like topographic mapping, architecture and engineering, as well as cropping up in movies like The Matrix. The actors are of course filmed using bullet time, but the background is a 3D model created by using photos of the real life set. So that's the basic how, but why would developers want photorealism in their games? Surely video games are all about the whimsical, fantastical places that are impossible to visit in any other way. <laughs> Simulators aside, that is. Well, one of the reasons is down to the uncanny, or das Unheimlich, if you want the awesome sounding German term. It's a Freudian concept which refers to when we see something that feels both familiar and alien at the same time, causing an internal conflict as we're both attracted and repulsed by the object. In video games, we frequently see this with game characters who look 99% real, and it's referred to as the uncanny valley. Well, it, it sort of turns out that it happens with textures in video games as well. Our brain unconsciously rejects these perfectly tiled textures, even though they're doing the job, and it kind of cuts you off from the immersion. With photorealistic assets, such as the ones gained from photogrammetry, there's nothing in your brain telling you that this isn't right, because they are real. Another reason to use photogrammetry comes down to the actual game development process. Making assets for games is an expensive and time-consuming business. Not every studio has the manpower of a company like Ubisoft, who has hundreds of people working on the same game across the globe at any one time. For example, take Assassin's Creed Unity. Ubi's developers rebuilt the famous Notre Dame in Paris to a one-to-one -one scale and spent upwards of a year doing it. That's really cool, but using that amount of time and resources just to make assets simply isn't feasible for a smaller studio. Instead of painstakingly creating each asset, taking pictures of objects and letting the software build it is much quicker. Plus, you capture all the small nuances like cracks and erosion that an artist might simply not have time to create. So photogrammetry is an awesome way of creating fantastic looking assets, but is it the be all and end all? Is it going to replace traditional game artists with photographers and software. Well, if we come back to the vanishing of Ethan Carter, you'll see that it isn't strictly speaking fully photorealistic. After the photogrammetry, the team added stylized lighting, post-processing, and mixed in some traditionally made assets. But why? Because as the astronaut's art director, Andrei Poznanski admits himself, 
They're making a dark, weird fiction game. If the world doesn't match up with the environment that we're seeing, there'll be some kind of dissonance, which would break up the immersion. So it's likely we'll see more photogrammetry now that the software and technology is more readily available, but in order for developers to really create those living, breathing environments to tell their story in, the artist needs to add character. So to that end, photogrammetry is just a big, useful tool in the artist's arsenal. All right, that's it for this week, folks. But if you would like to try photogrammetry yourself, head over to the Agisoft website right now where they're offering a free trial of their software. Oh, and for more on the uncanny valley that we talked about before, you should also have a look at Cam's previous episode discussing our love-hate relationship with zombies. Cam will be off his couch and back in the studio next week with more gamey science and probably no small amount of RSI from all that FIFA he's been playing. In the meantime, you can catch me on Twitter at ReadySebiGo. Thanks for watching.